So we've created our first objects, that is a struct of a rectangle and a struct of a square that inherits from rectangle. And we've used default constructors to force the user to specify the length and width, or in the case of the square, just the length, on instantiation. And we did this to prevent the possibility of a square having a length that is different from a width. However, the user still has the ability to create such a square. So for instance, if I come down into my main program, I can simply say s.length equals 6. And now my square will have a length of 6 and a width of 5. So s.area is going to be 30, as you can see here. So we need a way to prevent the user from accessing this feature directly. So let's clear this. And let's look at our rectangle struct. Now in a struct, by default, all of the member variables and methods are going to be public by access. That is, you can access any of these in or outside of the structure itself. So when I come down here and I say s.length, I have access to s.length. I'm allowed to manipulate it and retrieve its value. But as we can see, this would allow the user to do things that we don't want them to do. So what we can do is actually specify the permission levels that the user is going to have. So I can say private. And then I can say public for the constructor. So by specifying private here, when I come down into my main function, I can now say s.length, and you can see it's crossed out there. And that's because it is a private member. So I can say length equals five. And if I try to compile this, it will fail. And that's because I no longer have access to this member. So by specifying that length and width are private to the rectangle, it makes it so that you're only able to access them from within the structure itself. It has to be within this block of code in order for me to manipulate these. And now since my constructor is public, I can call the constructor out here, which allows me to access length and width indirectly. And this holds true with the square as well. I can't in square say length equals five, as you saw it was crossed out there. So these private variables are only accessible from within the rectangle struct itself. So I'm going to clear that out. So it's important to note that by default in a struct, all of the member variables and functions are public. So unless otherwise stated, you will have access to the items of a struct. And this differs from the other type of object that we can use called a class. And in a class, let's say my class is circle. All of the members of a class are private by default. So if I say int radius, and then I declare one out here. And then I can say C dot radius. You can see that by default, it is inaccessible. I have to explicitly tell it that radius is public in order to access it out here. So in a struct, all of the member variables and functions are public by default, whereas in a class, they are private by default. Aside from this, the only real difference is that when I declare an instance of a struct, I need to repeat the keyword struct before saying the particular struct that I want to use and the variable name. In a class, I can just say the class name and then the variable name. So it makes the instantiation of these objects a little bit easier. So until now, all of our objects have been structs, but structs are not the typical way of creating objects. In fact, it's only in special cases that you'll actually want to use a struct. Generally, we want to use classes, and we want our member variables and functions to be private by default. So let's recreate the rectangle and square structs as classes. 
So I'm going to also delete the circle class, and I'll say class rectangle, and we'll say int length, int width, and now we want public so that we have access to these functions outside of the class itself, and we'll say rectangle will be our constructor. We'll pass it L, and we'll pass it W, and we'll say length equals L, and width equals W. And then our area function will be int area, takes no parameters. Let's give it a little space. And we'll simply return length times width. So now let's create our square class. We'll say class square, and it will inherit from rectangle. And we want a public method that is the constructor that takes one argument as an int. We'll just say length. And this is going to pass that to the rectangle constructor twice. We'll have some empty curly brackets. And that is all that we need for the square class. So if we come down here and change this, so we'll say rectangle r, and we'll pass it 3 and 5 for its length and width. And we'll say square s with 5 as both its length and width. But now you can see that there is still a problem here. So remember that by default, all of the member variables and functions are private in a class. However, we declared area to be public in the rectangle class. But notice that we have a problem here. That is, area is a private member of rectangle. However, if we look at the definition of area in rectangle, we can see that it is declared under public. What's actually happening here is that it is becoming private through our inheritance here. Just like how member variables and functions are private by default in a class, the actual method of inheritance is also private by default in a class. So I have to specify public as a type of inheritance. And specifying this as public makes it so that all of the public members of the parent class retain their public status when inherited in the child class of square. We didn't need to do this in the struct because everything is public by default in a struct. So that includes this inheritance structure. But if we had wanted to in the struct, we could have specified private. And that would have made all of the public members of the struct private upon inheritance. So by specifying public as the type of inheritance we want for the square, we now gain access to the s.area function. We can run it, and we can see 25 as our output. So classes force us to use a bit more control when implementing member variables and functions. They make us think more about what the user should and should not be able to do with the object directly and also what the children of an object should and should not be able to do directly. So from now on, when we talk about objects, we are generally going to be using classes instead of structs for this added layer of security. So if this video was useful for you, please leave a like. It helps me grow the channel and it will help other people find the video. And again, if you would like to see these tools used in a broader context, I recommend checking out my Developer Diary series where I am working long term on big projects and actually putting these tools to use. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something and I will see you in the next one.